Hey, this is Katie. It's so good to see you. If you were here with us last week, it's good to have you back again. And if not, it's good to see you for the first time. Thank you for joining. If you want to join with me every week for a devotional video, you can go ahead and subscribe to KMBC's channel and then you'll get notified when they come out. Today I wanted to share with you a little bit more about myself and my story a little bit more so you can kind of get to know me too. Um, growing up, I was a very sh shy and timid person and so I often felt invisible and unnoticed, insignificant, um, and excluded the outcast. And if you're a middle or high school student, I guarantee that most of you know at least what it's like to feel like that sometimes. Um, so that was the majority of my growing up years. And then also even now, I have what is called fibromyalgia. It's an invisible illness. So I have pain, I have sleep issues, but there's nothing physically wrong with my body that you can see, which is why it's called invisible illness. So I know what it's like to have unseen invisible pain or to feel insignificant and I think that both of those are things that all of us are struggling with right now when we're going through a global pandemic because a lot of the pain and the issues and the things you're dealing with right now no one sees because there's no one around to see them and a lot of you are isolated more than you've ever been before and so you probably feel ins insignificant alone um, and a lot of the pain you're going through again no one sees so I want to encourage you today with the story of Hagar in Genesis 16 because Hagar was a slave so she was a very in insignificant person um, but she also had a very rough story where her masters abused her so much so that she fled into the wilderness and she was just alone no one, and hurting. And so I want to read to you Genesis 16, 7 through 13. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her, she being Hagar. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Let me read that last verse again. You are the God who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. And that was so encouraging to me when I found that Bible verse for the first time. And to think that even when I feel insignificant, the God of the universe doesn't think so. He takes notice of me. Even when I think my pain is unseen, is unnoticed by everyone else, God is still there and God sees all the pain I go through. And not only that, but I think about Bible verses such as Psalm 139, how God knows what we are going to say before we say it, how he knows when we sit, when we stand up. He is very aware of what is going on in our lives. And then I think even more deeper than that, God understands what is going on in our lives. Um, because 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that God fully understands us. It says, then I will know even as I am fully known. So I just hope that encourages you that even in a time when you might feel insignificant, you're not. God notices you. And even when you think no one sees the pain you're going through, God does. And so our response is to hold on to the promises that God gives us, like he will never leave us or forsake us, and then to draw closer to the God who is aware 
of what is going on in our lives and who understands it. Let me pray for you. Dear Father, I thank you for this person that is sitting here listening. And Lord, they may feel insignificant right now, but they are not. The God of the universe takes notice of them. And you care about them, Father. And you see everything that's going on in their lives and all these situations. You see when they cry themselves to sleep at night. You see the scary situations they are dealing with. You see the pain that no one else sees. You see the fears. You see the decisions they have to make. You see the homework they need to get done. You see the relationship issues that are going on in their lives. You see the frustration and the anger. You see the questions and the doubt. You see the things that other people don't notice and you see the things that they try to hide. And Lord, I pray that you would give them your strength and your peace in this time, that you would be present with them and that you would step into their situation, Lord. And God, that even when they are alone in their house and no one else sees them, I pray that you would remind them that you see them and that you're there and that they matter. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I just want to let you know that if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to KBC's channel so that you can get notified when these videos come out because next week we're going to be talking about water, particularly about wells and cisterns and how that relates to your life. And it's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. So I am looking forward to it and you're not going to want to miss it because I have a little surprise up my sleeve as well. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And then also, if you want to go ahead and comment anything that you want to comment and open up kind of a discussion, you can go ahead and do that in the comments below. Feel free to talk and discuss, and I'll reply to you as well. And then, until then, I will see you next week.